Hey, welcome back. It's a happy day for me, and I'm glad you're sharing it with me. And I'm uh, crossed the line at 82, on the way to 100, 18 more to go. I'm counting down now. So it's amazing. God has been so good, and He's been so faithful. And I, for that, I'm very grateful. But I want to tell you about Larry Lawton. Larry was a wanted man. His smash and grab crime spree put him in the crosshairs of the police. And they put him atop their list of most notorious jewel thieves. While Larry says he got a rush breaking the law, he felt completely powerless after being broken down in prison. All right, everybody, hands up. Come on, hands up. Let me see you. You stay for you three, four, on the floor. Come on, on the floor. I took over the whole store. Don't move. Don't you move. I would tie up the owner and tie up whoever's in there. Down, on the floor. Get those hands behind your back. Come on. And empty the whole store. It would take all day. <laughs> One robbery, I actually had about seven people tied up. It was a big rush. Get your hands behind your back. In 1996, Larry Lawton was on the FBI's most wanted list as the number one jewelry store robber on the East Coast. I felt like I would never get caught. I definitely thought I was better than everybody else, smarter than everybody else. Larry Lawton's life of crime began in his 20s. He became a bookie, taking bets on the streets of New York. Larry had seen his dad win while betting on sporting events and was intrigued by the easy money. But Larry delved far deeper than harmless small-time bets with buddies. I got into the lore of gambling and excitement and that, that fast life. Larry became so successful, members of organized crime took notice and asked Larry to work for them. The more you're involved, the more money you make, the higher people recognize you. And when they recognize you as an earner, as they call it, a person who makes money for organized crime or whoever you're working for at that time, you become bigger and bigger. And again, your power becomes more and more. That's how Larry began robbing jewelry stores. Over the next seven years, he heisted 20 stores and got away with nearly $15 million in diamonds alone. But to Larry, it wasn't the money that mattered. I don't think any amount of money would have been enough for me. A small slip-up ended Larry's run from the FBI. A store owner called in a car that looked suspicious. The license plates were from a rental, and Larry's name was on the rental agreement. The FBI had found their man. He was sentenced to 12 years in federal prison. Walking into any prison, I don't care how big and tough you are, you're not the biggest and the toughest there. They'll stab you, they'll get you in the morning, they'll get you when you're not looking. There's a different demeanor. You don't bump into a person in prison because you can get killed. Larry had one constant thought. Boy, I screwed up. Is there anything lower than this? Can it get worse? It did get worse. Larry was thrown into solitary confinement for over a year. But in the hole, Larry made a friend by communicating through a vent. It was his daily sanity until the friendship abruptly ended. So we're actually just talking, and he turns and says to me, hey, Larry, I love you, brother. I'm checking out. And I looked, and I said, like, where are you going? You're in the hole with me. And it hit me. It hit me that he was going to kill himself. I jumped up, and I talked right into the vent, and I said, Jack, lay down. We'll talk about it after count. And then I felt total helplessness. I couldn't help this guy. I couldn't get to his cell. I couldn't go through the wall and help him. When the guards came through to count the inmates, Larry was afraid of what they might find in Jack's cell. Man down, man down. One F, I need immediate assistance. I the guards all come running, and I'm standing at my door looking at all these people come running. They go into Jack's cell. They bring him out, and he was on a gurney. And that was the end of it. Larry's friend Jack had killed himself. It's like a punch in the stomach. It's a punch that you can't feel, but you feel in your heart because you get close to people. I just laid down and I was sitting there and I wasn't crying. I was in shock. That night, Larry thought back on lessons about Jesus he had learned as a child 
and he prayed to God. And I'm saying, you know, why am I here? Why not me? Why didn't I kill myself? And I heard God tell me, I have plans for you. He, I heard the words, I have plans for you. People think you're crazy, and I'm not. I heard those words, I have plans for you. And at that point, I knew Jesus Christ was mine. I knew Jesus Christ was going to be in my life forever. I knew I had a purpose, that God had a mission for me. When Larry got out of prison two years later, he started an outreach called Reality Check. He speaks to at-risk teens about the dangers and the consequences of crime. Reality Check is rapidly becoming one of the most successful teen programs in the nation, and it is approved for court order counseling. You need hope and you need Jesus. You need a way. You need faith. If you don't have faith, you don't have anything. God changes people. Jesus Christ can change your life. I have a plan for you. I have plans for you. I have a hope and a future for you. It doesn't matter if you're robbing stores, if you're a tough guy, if you've been locked up in prison, if you've terrorized people, if you've stolen things. God can forgive all that. He doesn't necessarily take away the punishment that you've had. Larry was in jail. There wasn't any question about it. He had to serve time. But God had a plan for him. And God has a plan for you. He has a plan for your life. He has something wonderful for you. And what he says to you is, if you will surrender to me, I will open up for you something that is so wonderful you can't believe it. I hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, neither has it entered into your heart what I have prepared for you. I've got something wonderful. And what he says is, will you surrender to my plan? Will you surrender to the wonderful plan that I have for your life? If you want that plan in your life, I want you to bow your head and pray. Pray these words. Lord Jesus, I want your plan. I want to be part of your plan. And I want to receive your plan for my life. And so right now, Lord, I say, come into my heart. Live in me. And from this moment on, I am yours. Make me part of your plan. Thank you, Lord. If you pray with me, I want you to acknowledge what you've done. I want you to go to your telephone, and I want you to call and say, I prayed. I prayed with Pat. I gave my heart to the Lord. I have something I want to give you to help you start out. It's called A New Day. It'll help you. It's a CD. You can put it in your machine, play it. It's pretty simple. Just put it in your CD player, and there it is. A new day. And uh, it's all for you. So call right now and say, yes, I'm going to be part of God's plan. Well, tomorrow, we've got John.